Hi, welcome back. So today we're going to have a look at what's normally called desensitising. It's something I just, um, well, ignored really because the concept of desensitising doesn't make any sense to me. You know, I want my horse to be as sensitive as possible. I want him to keep his sensitivity. And then I heard it better expressed by my hero, Buck Brannaman, who said it's preparing the horse to live in the human world. And that does make a lot of sense. You know, it's not their world. So much of what we expect them to do, um, they would never come across in nature. So it's, um, yeah, just to prepare them for all the different things we're going to do, you know, to tie them up. Maybe one day we're riding out and a plastic bag blows along the ground or we've got a big raincoat, we have to take it off or it blows in the wind and flaps around. You know, we can use tarpaulins, flags, bags to get them used to this kind of stuff as a, as a preparation. You know, even tying up to teach them to release from pressure. There's lots of different little ways we should prepare our horse for the world so they don't get themselves into trouble. Um, we're going to have a go with all of them. To be honest, I don't know how this is going to go because uh, it's not, none of mine really have any issues with stuff. So I never really do a lot of this. I have done a little bit of flag work with Umo because he's quite spooky. But um, we're going to have a go with all of them, and it'll just be interesting to see see what happens, see what comes up. Um, I mean, I think an important point in this, well, two important points, the first one being that your horse should find a safe place in you. So whatever is going on, whatever happens, that if you say to the horse, hey, it's cool, it, this is safe, just stay here with me, you know, whether it's that competition, there's a big banner flapping, whatever it is that spooks them, um, if they really trust and believe in their rider, in their human, then they, that should overcome that, the, the fear they're feeling. But, um, you know, that's not always possible. We can't always get there. So uh, that's why it's an important task. And the other point to make is it actually can be quite dangerous work. Um, you know, I heard a story recently, my friend Elke was telling me one of somebody in her stables, they were doing this online course and they actually ended up making their horse more fearful. So you really have to pay attention to your horse's expression. You know, you don't want to make them more scared of stuff and always to remember the, the rule that we always say, you know, just because it's working, that's not it, done. You need to confirm it. So even if you think, oh yeah, he's fine with the flag, I've just done that once. You need to do that again and again in different ways, different situations. Um, the other important thing to notice is we're going to use whatever it is we're using to expose them. That, um, you know, it's our attitude with that. It's not like, oh, I'm going to attack you. No, it's very, it's very soft. Our body language and our breath should be very neutral. The, the, you know, to give the message that it's okay, I'm not going after for you, you know, make the horse a winner, make it easy for them to do the right thing. And we're going to use that same thing then to ask them for something. So once they're comfortable with being touched with, for example, the flag, we can then use the flag to ask the horse to move off. Um, and then, of course, presenting the flag to them in different places in movement can be a whole other thing. Obviously, to also do everything from both sides, but you know, just because they can stand still and take the flag, do they really understand it's okay? If they do, they'll be fine with it also when they're walking. So we're going to um, get them round there and see what happens. I, I wish you could swim Like the dolphins so Monieco is apparently a pretty good bomb-proof pony. Um, he's not really bothered about any of that. You know, at 31 years old, we would assume not. You know, he's had rugs on, he's been used to stuff, so there's no reason why he should, but we thought we would just check it out. Um, I did forget to mention before, as you can see, this flag, I mean, it's just an old whip. I've got a bit of material on the end, so I've got one that's more rustly and the other silky one that doesn't make a noise. Just um, maybe it's easier to get them used to the other kind first and then do a rustly one. You know, you can also just use a plastic bag. 
um, and, and a bit of cane or a bit of stick. I mean, you can buy purpose-built flags also if you want to splash out on one of them, but just to say it's not necessary. Um, right, so we're going to go and get the next one. Who's next, Goidi? I think Bing's next, but we're going to go in order, descending order of age. So let's see what um, Galileo thinks about it. Nothing, nothing will keep us together. Oh, we can be them forever and ever. Oh, we can be heroes just for one day. So Galileo had a little bit more reaction than Monieco, not too much. He's actually a really sensitive spooky horse, but on the other hand, he does trust me. You know, he was born here and nothing really bad's ever happened to him because of people. So um, he's very trusting. Um, I might do a bit more work with the one on the fence there. He was quite spooky at that. I was going to ask him to lead by and when I saw how spooky he was, mm -hmm. I thought, no, I'm going to stand against it and lead him by in front of me. So I'm between him and the scary thing on the fence which um, made it easier for him to get used to it, which he did quite quickly, and also to keep me safe. You know, this you have to be very careful, especially when you're doing like this one on the ground as well, that you leave enough gap that the horse can start by going through the gap between the fence and the tarpaulin, and then you can move it in gradually, and never to let the horse go between the tarpaulin and you. Um, which would put you in a very dangerous spot yourself. So it's just really keeping an eye out on the horse, um, how they're feeling about things. And um, yeah, he was quite okay with it. I don't know if he's ever had a rug on. He maybe has done a few times. So that shouldn't have been much of a problem. It wasn't much of a problem. He was like looking at it. He forgot about shaking his head up and down for the flies for a while, didn't he, Bing? That's how you notice if he's really upset or distracted that he stops stops worrying about the flies for a minute because he's really sensitive to the flies okay let's see what happens with morisco so we didn't bother with the flags with morisco because he's done a lot of that i um got him used to flags to ride out with the flag because we have trouble around here sometimes with people leaving their horses out loose um, even stallions sometimes and if they come running towards you so I, I got him used to the flag and the one on the ground we actually did with him when he was a uh, foal when he was quite young and it's funny the different reactions you know I had him and another one and we put it on the ground brought them to the gate and he ran over and did this I actually picked it up in his mouth and started dragging it around and the other one took one look and turned around and bombed back out the gate again. So they were complete opposites, really. He's usually not bothered about anything. Um, he is very bothered about the one on the fence, though, initially. It was blowing quite, it's blowing quite a lot in the wind. So Morisco thinks the best solution is just to go really fast and get past it as quick as possible. So that's fine, you know, as long as he's not bombing off out of control, I let him have a little trot and just um, control the direction of his feet. But if he wants to trot past it, that's fine. That we could do a bit more of that and get him a bit more used to that actually. <laughs> so Umo's had a bit of work with the flag, that's important work for him. Um, I just wanted to point out the dangers again. We did, I did mention that but it was, I was just remembering a particularly fiery Arab filly I was working with. And I put the flag and she literally went to attack it. You know, I put it just in front of her chest below her nose. And she reared up, lashed out with her front legs and really went for it, ears flat back. It was quite um, shocking. You know, that was a real fight rather than flight instinct. So it's just to, you know, keep a safe distance, keep yourself safe. And also, if the horse is moving away, um, you know, to let them keep moving, just to direct the direction of the feet, but let them keep moving. And then if they stop, you can take it away. Um, the flag or the tarpaulin, whatever it is, and then try again. But um, it's important to let them move if they need to move. So Umo's actually not very bothered. You know, we've done, I did quite a lot of work with him with flags over there, and the little bits of work I have done here with him have been about the flag and the saddle pad. 
so it's quite a big square pad, saddle pad so he was very good about that um, the one on the ground yeah he got used to that very quickly the thing to remember with that is to um, only leave one door open to go through you know not that you're trying to push them through the gap it's just to block the other exits so block the sides and block the back that the only way forward is to go through but it's very important there not to push them and just to wait you know if they don't want to go just wait wait let them look let them sniff let them have a look around give it a bit of time and they'll usually then just go through on their own um, if you had a very spooky horse you would want to fold it up much smaller so if they really got in trouble you know they could jump over it it's a shame we don't have a spookier horse to demonstrate with we'll need to find one next time we come across a very spooky horse or one that needs this work we'll have to make another little video about it so they've all been very good about that no real issues there might practice a bit more on a windy day with the one on the fence maybe we need to do a follow-up video of what you do when the horse is more spooky well i mean it's the same principle just to see how that goes anyway that's um enough for us today and um we'll see you next time <laughs>